What do you know about Islam? They are not Christian, and they do not have prophets. Well, from what we know, they are like that. That means they don't believe in what we believe, like Jesus, then. Ha, huh, I thought not. Well, that could be, but actually, Muslims, Christians, and Jews worship the same God. So they are actually monotheistic? Oh, they have the same common doctrines and beliefs. Very good. What book do they use? The Torah, right? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it is called the Quran, which discusses the New Testament as revelations from God. So that means Muslims do not believe Jesus is the Son of God? That's right. It would contradict the Islam belief in the uniqueness of God's divinity. So it's like the show I saw on PBS where they compare it to Judaism and Christianity as a, which has a strong legal tradition? Yes, that's right. They also have dietary restrictions and cannot eat pork. Oh, so that's why my friend Marco could not eat pork when he came over. I never knew he was a Muslim. That's right. Not all Muslims wear burqas or robes. In, in fact, many look just like we do. Marco also faces Mecca to pray or to pray five times a day. He also has to take a pilgrimage to Mecca, right? Yes. The Islamic religion says that each person must, if they can afford it, take pilgrimage to Mecca and pray five times a day facing east. That's very cool. I wish we had to do that. There's so much devotion and faith in the Islamic religion. Yes. Can we visit their church? Well, actually, it's called a mosque. And yes, we can. There are many around the Milwaukee area. Yay, let's go. Uh, they believe like we do. I had no idea that they had so many, or I had no idea we had so many preconceived notions about Middle Eastern Muslims and the Islamic religion. We should respect their beliefs and really talk to Marco more about his faith. And that is the perception that Islam is fundamentally different from Christianity and Judaism. guys talking and I was wondering why you would think that. Well, he looks Arab and all Arabs are Muslim, right? How do I look Arab? Uh, the skin color and the way you dress, the thing in your head. Well, I'm a Muslim and I'm not Arab. I'm from Bosnia. A lot of Arabs are Muslim, but not all Muslims are Arab and not all Arabs are Muslim. Oh, I guess. That's just a big understanding. Thank you guys for correcting me. Have a good day. You look a little lost. The desert is over in Egypt. <laughs> I'm not from the desert. I was born in Medina, a city of over a million people. Well, then why do you look like you're going on safari in the desert? I dress this way because Allah commands modesty and cure it. I am following the law of Allah by covering myself in public. So why are you in America? Don't all your friends want to kill us? I'm not a terrorist. I am peaceful. I do not wish to harm you people. Well, I kind of thought you all lived in the desert figuring out ways to attack America. I assure you, this is not the majority of Muslims are like. Only radicals use violence to spread the word of Allah. Hey man, how are you? I just saw this crazy Muslim guy lady over there and he made me nervous. Why are you nervous? Not a Muslim's a terrorist. He's just wearing more conservative dress. Well, if you're Muslim, why are you wearing a robe and turban? The Quran does not say you must wear a robe and turban, just that you're supposed to dress modestly. That is why I'm wearing this suit. I, dress, I, still am, I still am modest. I'm from Turkey, where we have adopted many Western styles of dress over the years. So how do your people feel about America? Don't you hate us? No, we don't hate anyone. The Turks have interacted with Western, Westerners for centuries. We do not hate America. The terrorists are radicals. Thanks for the info. Maybe next time I won't be so nervous around you guys. Hope so. Did you guys see the news? No, I didn't. Nope, what was it about? Well, it showed Palestinians, Palestinians celebrating the events of September 11th and burning the American flag. Really? The Middle East is nothing but a bunch of terrorists that hate America. Well, that's not entirely true, Alex. Joe, did they show the other Palestinians that were mourning the attacks? 
Uh, no, they did not. You can't always look at the negative side. The news tends to concentrate on the negative or treating aspects of society in times of conflict and ignore the productive aspects of their culture. Yeah, I guess you have a good point there. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense to me now. So Josh, I'm wondering why our news uses stereotypical images. Well, Alex, when you see the stereotypical images, repeatedly it evokes a reaction, most often not of a negative re Most often it is not a, not is a negative reaction. Does that answer your question, Alex? Yes, it does. Thank you for cleaning that up for me. You're welcome. Anytime. Uh, hey, start over, start over, start over. So these are some before and after what we thought about uh, Muslims in general and Middle Eastern culture before um, modern Middle East and before and then after um, learning some things about their culture. Um, so one of the things we thought, I thought before was that all Muslims are anti-Israel. I kind of thought that because Israel is mostly Jewish that just every Middle Eastern country was out to get them. Um, but I've learned, uh, especially through the guest speaker, that many Muslims have worked for peace with Israel. And some countries like Jordan are actually on very good terms with Israel. So uh, that's something that I learned. Um, another mis preconceived notion was we thought there were not that many Muslims or Jews in the world. But there are 13 million Jews in the world and 3 billion Muslims. That's a lot. <laughs> Super cheesy. Um, USA does not give uh, to, mu to Muslim countries, but actually they do. They give 4 billion to Egypt and 13 billion to Israel with a catch. They actually have to give it back to the United States for stuff that we need. So they don't really get that to see it. And um, another preconceived notion is that there are lots of Jewish countries, and there's only one Jewish country in the world that he knows of, and that's Israel. Okay. Um, also, we uh, thought, I guess we as Westerners kind of think that we live in a world where there aren't many Christian countries, um, but in reality, especially after listening to the speaker, uh, the United States is a Christian country, even though it's not the official religion. Um, the point about, you know, the, us having Easter break and the fact that we still follow many Christian customs um, is just something that uh, a lot of people forget about. And it's also the same way in South America and Europe. Is that for Paris, France, which has more Muslims than Christians? And all Muslims are terrorists, and that's not true, as we portrayed in our previous film. Um, only radicals are. So we shouldn't think they all live in deserts on camels and are blowing up bombs. Yep. <laughs> and he's laughing over there. <laughs> <laughs> so we also, speaking of Israel, we're going to go over the brief history, which Israel um, in 1948 came through a war and conflict. In the 1960s, there, the Soviet Union um, global reach through the Cold War. In 1967 was a key year for Israel and Palestine. In May 1967, Soviets provide intelligence. And May 30, 1967, King Hussein signs a mutual defense pact with Nasser Arafat um, in Syria and uh, Jordan and Egypt. And um, let's see, then. Uh, June 9th threatened the Suez Canal, and in six days Israel destroys Syria and Egypt, which is the war that the um, speaker was talking about today. And um, in 1948, Israel defeats monarchy and 1967 Arab, Arab regimes. And they didn't really start terrorist activity until 1967, so when UN, the UN passed the resolution 242 territory by war, and just settlement of the refugee problem. Okay. Um, some other things related to Israel in the Middle East uh, are the Oslo Agreement, which was the big agreement 
Um, the Oslo Accords were with Air Fat and then Bill Clinton from the United States. And um, this was uh, concerning Palestine and Israel and the conflict that had been happening. And so the agreement was to transfer uh, temporary authority to the Palestinian Liberation Organization in the West Bank. And then Israel was supposed to withdraw from Gaza and uh, Jericho. And then they would hold elections in Israel and have kind of a two-state solution. But this kind of failed and Israel wouldn't withdraw unless the PLO withdrew. And so uh, there was some disagreement over that. But eventually with the Camp David Accords, um, Arafat recognized Israel's right to exist, and there was the famous handshake between the two as kind of a dialogue. They started like a dialogue between the countries, um, and so there's still kind of an uneasy peace between the countries that uh, they don't often get along, but they're not in any full-out wars anymore.